we took an epic cruise journey on the Diamond Princess around Japan for 13 days. I'll show you precisely what it's like to live on board the first Princess Cruise built in Japan to the Japanese fine dining and opulent facilities. Our fantastic adventure took us to 11 beautiful cities. If you have always wanted to visit Japan, watch this video to see why we think cruising is the best way to see it. Let's pick up our story in Atlanta, Georgia, where we used all of our Delta points to fly to Tokyo and then to our departure port in Yokohama. Welcome to our channel. This video will be part of our Japan series where we share our magical first experience throughout Japan. Please subscribe so you can follow along with us on this remarkable journey. Our trip started in one of the cleanest, safest cities we have ever experienced, Yokohama. If you plan on cruising on the Diamond Princess, we highly recommend staying in Yokohama a few days before your trip. Checking in was very easy, and we didn't have to wait long because we completed the setup on the Princess app before our arrival. I just had to wait in a short queue for a few formalities, such as taking unflattering security photos. Once on board, we get a proper look at our home for the next 13 days. This was our first cruise with Princess. They are famous for the original Floating Stars TV series, The Love Boat, which aired from 1977 to 1986. We were determined to stick to our frugal budget for this cruise, so we went with an inside cabin number C325. It didn't take long for us to realize that we didn't have to hold our medallion up to the door because it received the signal when you were about three feet away, saving time to access your cabin. The room was what we expected from a ship built in 2003 with updates such as a large screen TV and USB ports in the lamps. We were not complaining as we were excited and looking forward to the upcoming destinations. A short safety protocol, we wasted no time and headed to Lido Deck to see the Yokohama skyline as we sail it away. We were happy with our decision to arrive two days early to experience this wonderful city. The view is simply stunning. The buildings and attractions along the waterfront of the Minato Mirai district are a sight to behold at any time of the day, though they look particularly enchanting at night. The Yokohama Bay Bridge is our gateway to this highly anticipated adventure. Our captain said the Diamond Princess has less than a five foot clearance. We used our medallion app to plan dinner with what Princess calls Dine My Way. The app lets you choose your daily dining times in one of the five free dining rooms. I started with a main course called Sake Miso Yaki, which is grilled salmon and miso sauce. Noemi started with baked potato soup. Since it was the first day, 
I asked for another main dish, the seared mahi-mahi and pineapple mango salsa. Noemi chose the slow roasted prime rib. For dessert, I had to try the Princess Love Boat Dream and instantly became jealous when I saw Noemi's Carmel Pecan Turtle Cheesecake. It is time for tonight's entertainment in the Princess Theater on decks six and seven. Shows were held twice a night with a variety of performances. We had an English speaking and Japanese speaking fantastic cruise director. Cruise director from Miyazaki, Japan. My name is Natalie, I'm your English cruise director from Sydney, Australia. All of the music and production performances were excellent throughout our trip. After a good night of sleep, I got up early to stroll around the ship while everyone else was sleeping in. I love doing this because it gives me the feeling of being the only person on the ship and the best time to make these videos. On deck 15 aft of the ship, I found the outdoor whirlpool with some of the best views. I love the tiered level deck layout. walk over to the center of the ship to Neptune's pool. This is where you will also find movies playing nearly all day and night. There were stretching videos this morning, so I had to show off my flexibility skills and natural athleticism. The deck allows you to walk around the entire ship stern to bow. Then I found the sanctuary on deck 16, above the lotus pool and spa. The adult only sanctuary offers an exclusive, luxurious, spa inspired top deck retreat. Half day as well as full day passes are available for $20 or $40. Like all modern cruise ships, Diamond has a sliding ceiling, indoor pool called Calypso Reef. It was here that I found out that I was no match for the ping pong talent. What do you call a girl standing in the middle of a table tennis court? Annette? Okay, okay, my jokes are worse than my ping pong skills. Now that I have worked up an appetite, it's time for breakfast in the Horizon Court Buffet on Deck 14. We became friends with a lovely Japanese family, and they introduced me to natto. It's a traditional Japanese food made from soybeans that have been fermented. They said it was an acquired taste because of its powerful smell, strong flavor, stick, and slimy texture. I was instantly hooked and ate it with salad for almost 10 days straight for breakfast. There was also a delicious ramen noodle station available every day. Of course, you find the usual Western dishes, but I like to try different things, like the soba noodles infused with matcha that makes them green.
for the free casual dining reservations we made with our app. There were five to choose from. The International Dining Room is on Deck 6, the largest and the only one offering breakfast and lunch. Attire is typically business casual, meaning no flip-flops or shorts. We found that all the dining rooms serve the same menus, so pick your favorite decor. There are three specialty dining rooms for a fai. Sabatini's on deck seven will give you a little taste of Italy for $29. Then there is Kai Sushi next to it, offering a modern sushi bar experience with a la carte pricing. Third specialty dining room. It used to be called Sterling Steakhouse, but was changed to Brazilian Steak. Now, I decided to explore the rest of the ship. Good Spirits Bar is located on the ground floor of the atrium. The central plaza was beautifully decorated with the traditional luxury style for this ship. I appreciated that the ship had a library on deck 5 outside the grand plaza. The Explorer's Lounge on deck 7 lounge with a dance floor is a multi-purpose venue hosting art auctions, trivia, and small performances such as Japanese storytelling, karaoke, and ballroom dancing. I like the enriching Japanese and English classes provided during the trip. Club Fusion is also on deck 7 and was very popular at night, hosting line dancing, ABBA, and 70s night. During the day, there was always a mixture of trivia. If anyone can help me tag this gentleman, I would be grateful. Yeah. It'll be on YouTube or Facebook. Is that, is that for YouTube? YouTube. Okay. YouTube. Please tag me. Tag me. Ryota Toyota. Tag me. Tag me. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, we have yeah. a YouTube channel. Oh, promoting. <laughs> The Wheelhouse is another large classic bar on Deck 7. It is full of dark wood, mahogany, and brass decor for sitting back and enjoying great music. Outside the Wheelhouse, you will find many places to hang out around the Central Grand Plaza where music is almost always playing. Deck 6 and 7 are where you will find plenty of duty-free shopping. Unfortunately, we didn't have room in our luggage for Captain Stanley, the bear. The casino is on Deck 6 with the standard slots and gaming tables. I only play in poker tournaments and there weren't any scheduled on our cruise. I wonder if my wife had anything to do with that? Hmm. Skywalker's nightclub is the coolest place to hang out and have a drink. I didn't find this club until the end of the trip because it's almost hidden on deck 18, with the only access being an escalator from deck 7. It had the best views of the wake and overlooked port and starboard sides. It was never busy, probably because no one knew it was there, so it made the perfect location for a sunset drink. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, you will enjoy our next video here if you click on the screen now.